Hello everyone and welcome to my video on 10 beginner tips for the MiG-21 BIS from a beginner. So I've been getting into the MiG-21 a bit, I've learnt a few things and I've kind of got to the point that I feel myself moderately comfortable with it. I'm mostly now trading one kill for one kill. And so, just like with the F5, I wanted to do a video on the top 10 things that I wish I knew before jumping into my first multiplayer game. So this certainly isn't an exhaustive list, this doesn't go into great detail. At the same time, this isn't a very, very basic guide. I'm not going to be taking you through how to do the individual startup, how to take off and so on. This is more aimed for people who have done all the tutorials, maybe watch some video tutorials, and just want some extra tips to give them that bit of an edge, avoid some of the failures that I did on my early rounds. So the first tip then is something we don't actually have to load up the game for. Instead, this is a option in the settings. And this is that you can set the cockpit to be displayed in English. If we go over to the special tab in options, scroll down to the MiG-21 BIS, we have this option, the custom cockpit livery, which by default is the Russian layout, but you can change it to English metric, and then all of the labels, all of the warning signs, everything in the cockpit will be as English. Some of you may very well have known that already, uh, but I do know some people who weren't aware of this setting. And it's also a bit of a personal preference. Some people I know really prefer going with the default for immersion levels. For me, I found it a much, much easier to learn what the switches do if they're labelled in English, and I find it much easier to deal with warning symbols if the warning lights are coming up in English. So this is certainly something I would recommend uh, for your first few games at least. You can certainly turn it onto the Russian one once you're familiar with what everything does. Okay, so the next few things are going to be dealing with what you want to be doing on the ground before taking off. And there's actually a fair bit of these. And most of these apply whether you are starting up manually or whether you are doing the auto startup because the auto start misses a lot of these. So I've just run this through the auto start to get us in that position. Normally I would be manually starting this, uh, but we can just see exactly what this is. If you're starting out, it may well be auto starting. So this is what the cockpit will look like as soon as that's completed. So the first thing that I'd like to point out is this funny little red switch here. This is your countermeasures cover. During startup, I make sure to flip that open. If this is down, your countermeasures will not fire. So you need that uncoupled there. This has got me killed more than once. And so right now during my startup procedure, I have two separate times where I double check that I have actually done this. If you ever are in combat and you're finding that your countermeasures are not firing, do just look down and double check that little switch there. So the next one is slightly less deadly but can cause issues, is the landing gear safety switch. This gear handle fixator here, which will stop your gear lever being retracted up. This is a safety feature for on the ground, because without this you can absolutely lift the gear up on the ground and it will just collapse. But in this position, once you take off, you won't be able to raise the gear. So I personally like taking that out, which you do by clicking just to the left of the gear, in order to put that safety out so I can do a single button push to raise the landing gear. Some people do prefer to wait until they're on the runway. I've never accidentally hit the landing gear, so I'm quite happy to do it during startup. Uh, but I certainly have seen other people have some interesting incidents where they accidentally press the wrong button, 
raise the landing gear, and as I said, that will absolutely cripple you. The fourth thing then is to do with all of these various switches on the side here. Now, when you're doing the auto start, it flips some of these, leaves others off. When you're doing a manual start, the easy way to do these is just to flip absolutely all of these, either into the forward position or into the up position if they're vertical. That is except one switch in particular. So you can switch all of these up except for the cam control. Everything else you want on, but the cam control really gets in the way. If we turn this on, what it will do is position this gun camera right in the middle of your HUD. Really obscuring the MiG-21 doesn't have the best visibility at the best of times. Having this right where you're wanting to put the enemy is just a pain. So everything else can absolutely be turned on, but leave cam off. Another thing in terms of the startup that definitely had me concerned when I was learning the tutorial is the rotary for selecting your missiles. It seemed very complicated at the time. We've got these different options depending on what you want to do, each one associating with a particular station on the wings rather than on any weapon type in particular. But this is a lot simpler than they make out. As long as you just have one type of Fox 2 and one type of Fox 1, then you can simply put this into the IRSAR 1 position and just leave it there throughout the rest of the flight. In this position, it will automatically move as you empty the inboard stations, and you can control whether you're firing a Fox 1 or a Fox 2 entirely with this switch here. If it's in the IR mode, it will be firing Fox 2s. In SAR, it will fire your radar-guided Fox 1s. Don't have to touch this dial at all once it's in the 1 position. So the final bit of startup advice here is a bit of a mix of startup and in combat advice. You want to use the IFF system. It is an absolute godsend, so make sure that during startup you turn the thing on and make sure in combat you actually use it. So for startup, you want to make sure that this switch over here is in the up position. It does get turned on there in the default auto start, but if you are doing a manual start, make sure you check this up. I don't know if it's required or not, but I have a habit of putting this switch here, which is the Type 81 IFF, also into the up position. Uh, please do let me know in the comments whether this is required up or down, but I know for a fact that it does work perfectly well if this is in the up position. When you're actually in combat and you're detecting things on your radar panel, what you want to press is this button here, the IFF radar interfere. I have that bound to my HOTAS. If you press and hold that, what it will do is change the symbology on your radar display so that any friends appear as a little double equal sign, one line above the other. Anything that is not returning an IFF ping, i.e. the bad guys, will remain as a single horizontal line, a little minus sign. You can use that at a distance to know that the thing that you're vectoring in on is an enemy or friendly. And it's also really useful for when you're close, particularly when you're in a furball, to make sure that the thing off your nose is actually an enemy. This has saved me from absolutely countless friendly fire incidents. Really, really good habit. This is one of my favourite things about the MiG-21. And while on the subject of the radar, please do use the radar in the MiG-21. Coming from the F5, which doesn't have a great radar, it's a bit hard to use, a bit complicated. The MiG-21's radar is absolutely brilliant, beautiful, simple to use once you get your head around it. 
There are plenty of guides online that talk you through how to use it correctly in a way that's a lot clearer than I found the in-game tutorial. And once I did get the hang of it, I found this really invaluable. Not only is it useful for making you aware of things that you've not spotted yet, but when you are being vectored in by either Overlord or a GCI, it makes it a lot easier to spot them. They'll appear there if they're slightly off center and you can easily bring your nose around so you know you're actually in a nose to nose merge. And once you have them locked up, the radar display changes to a sort of point of view display so you can very easily turn it to get nose on if say you've managed to lock something that you're actually not sure where it is. And of course, then you do have the option of firing your Fox 1s once you've got a nice radar lock, which can give some F5 some nasty surprises when they don't expect you to be able to fire off a missile in a head-to-head -head merge. Next, I'd just like to talk about the afterburner, and first off, when you're taking off. If you're used to, say, the F5, you're probably used to coming out of Afterburner almost immediately after takeoff. For the MiG-21, I found it's a good idea just not to do that. MiG-21 is a much bigger plane, a lot heavier, particularly with a big full ordnance. You really want to get your speed up early on, and so I just leave the Afterburner on for a few seconds, bit longer than I normally would, make sure my gears are up, my flaps are up, and I'm nice and stable before coming out of Afterburner. Seen a lot of people have issues, myself included. When you come out of afterburner too soon after takeoff, you can very easily find yourself pancaking into the ground. Well, also talking about the afterburner then, the next tip is going to be to do with combat. And whenever you're about to enter combat, whenever you are either approaching a merge or you're just at a merge, I find that it's always a good idea to put your afterburner on, and this really does two major things. The first is, of course, it gives you better thrust to weight ratio, you're getting a lot more engine power, that helps you make the most out of this aircraft. It's an ideal high energy aircraft, so you want to make the most of that great big engine on your back. And at the same time, it generally makes you a lot harder to spot. When you're out of afterburner, the MiG-21 leaves a really dirty black smoke trail. So by entering afterburner, that disappears. It does get replaced with really quite a bright afterburner glow, but that is still a little harder to spot, a little harder to track than this dirty great smoke trail you'd leave otherwise. And then lastly, when you've managed your mission, you're coming back home, you've got to try and land this thing. Problem is, this thing lands a lot faster than you might think it does, and it bleeds speed really quite fast. So I would generally aim to land faster than you think you need to. I aim for at least 300 kilometers per hour, probably a little higher than 300 kilometers per hour, and very often I find myself needing to go into afterburner during short final just to avoid pancaking into the ground. Again, there's nothing worse than after a nice successful flight coming home and losing it in the last five seconds because you suddenly drop below stall speed on final. And just before I round up, there's another tip that I'm not going to go into detail here, mostly because Enigma's already posted a really, really good in-depth video on this, and that is how to turn in the MiG-21. You absolutely shouldn't be treating this like an F5, you shouldn't be trying to do those incredibly high angle of attack turns. You can absolutely use this as a turn fighter. Enigma goes through a whole load of tips of how to do that. I'll just post a link to his video uh, down below. So please do check that out. Otherwise, those are my top 10 tips, plus a link for joining the MiG-21 community out there. If you do have any other tips to add to these, please do leave them down below. If you found this video, please do like, and if you think of anyone who might benefit, please do share. But until next time, Please be kind to yourself and everyone else. Cheers.